Hey guys, assalamu alaikum. I got a uh, email today and they said, just so you know, YouTube is for posting videos and you have a YouTube. So here I am making a video on the spot and uh, I want to answer a question that a sister emailed me. She wanted to know what are the um, similarities between Christianity and Islam. So this video, I'm going to break down kind of some of my thoughts, what I went through, my research, and what I think is similar, you know, because I really think that if we all practice each of these religions as they're intended and prescribed per the books and the prophets, peace be upon them, we would look essentially the same, literally essentially the same. And that is one of the thoughts I had when I took world religion class in college was like, I remember calling my sister and being like, do you realize that they all believe in the same thing and are fighting over the same thing? So with that being said, I was Christian. I was Lutheran Christian. I don't know if the Trinity was taught. I'm assuming it was because there was like the whole Father, Son, Holy Spirit thing. And I remember being like, Father is God, Son is Jesus, Holy Spirit, I just assumed was God. And I could never wrap my head around this whole like three people, three things being the same thing, like Allah forgive us, like obviously it is God Almighty, Allah, and then there's the prophets, peace be upon them all. They are human, they are people that were created and given special gifts, tasks, talents, if you will, to come and share their stories with us. So, you know, I obviously didn't know about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam until I met my first Muslim and when I found out that like they believe in the same prophets, peace be upon them, I was like, what? How is it possible that there's like Islam believes in Jesus? Like I really didn't understand that because there was always such an air of difference. Like Islam is different from Christianity. Christianity is different from Judaism. Like, but I can say as a Christian, I don't remember ever having hate towards anybody else. I didn't have hate towards Islam. I didn't have hate towards uh, the Jews. It was more like I knew that the Jews were like me, but that they didn't believe in Jesus. But I wasn't ever worried about it. I was never tripping on it. Um, so it really like blows my mind that Christians come to my page and troll me like, bro, we believe in the same thing. Unless you believe that Jesus is God, and that really upsets me. Yeah, but like, okay, so to break it down for you, I'll break it down for you. So like, I really loved Jesus. I really loved Moses. Those were the two stories that I really connected with as a kid. Moses more than Jesus, because I felt like the story was very clear. It was very, very easy to understand. He had to go to Pharaoh. He had the plagues. He, you know, took the people to the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted. Um, his staff turned into a snake, um, the burning bush. Like all of this was really exciting as a kid and I really understood it. Now in Christianity, the story of Jesus was more complicated because it was like, as a kid, I could fathom dying, but I didn't understand resurrection. And I didn't understand like why he was in a cave, why they killed him, like the dying for our sins and all of this stuff like was very confusing to me. I'm going to be honest. So it's like I really connected with Musa or Moses. Uh, peace be upon them all and both. So for me as a Christian woman, believing in God, believing Jesus was a person, a prophet, you know, mashallah, beautiful, amazing, special person. Nonetheless, uh, Jesus was like my motivator for my behavior because I just like reached a point in like my late 20s where I was just like, wow, like Jesus was like the OG nice guy. Like people were haters. They tried to kill him. They were naysayers. They were disbelievers. They thought he was full of it. And I just imagined him to be like so kind and sweet and nice and amazing. So I was always like, it wasn't like the what would Jesus do thing, but it was like more my own thing. Like, yeah, be like that. Like let, let people play you and be nice because I was like, that's what Jesus did. That was like, that's the way of like, be kind, put out good vibes. If people don't return it, sucks to be them. I'm still nice to you. That's what Jesus did, right? So once I realized that there was like Islam and that they believed in the same thing, I started doing my research and I was like, okay, so what the heck they believe in these people? I it was like, I thought that Islam was like something different and they believed in something different. Kind of like if I think of Hinduism or something and think like, okay, they believe in all these different gods and a god of this and a god of that, or like the ancient Egyptians, how they would believe in the god of the sun and the god of the moon and the god of like this and that. I was like so stressed and like, 
filed. But upon researching Islam, it really brought me back to my Christian values. And I realized there was a huge gap between what the Bible and Christianity says to do and what Christians majorly, what the majority of Christians are actually doing. So once I started seeing that and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm not even doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. It helped me to start like thinking about those things and doing them. So as a Christian, I was like, okay, it wasn't hard to see like, okay, they believe in the same people. The stories were similar, same thing. Uh, okay, so like, then what did it come down to? Okay, they believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so I had to look and see does like, was this a real guy? Does it conflict with the Bible and anything the Bible says? Does it conflict with anything Jesus or Moses or any of them did? And my biggest questions were like, why do they wear a hijab? Uh, why do they pray like that? Why do they fast? Because like, let's be honest, we're people and we're lazy. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to pray like that. I don't want to. But for me, I was just going off of faith and belief, not action. Anyways, so I started researching these topics like, why do women wear the headscarf okay because that's like foreign i never saw people doing that growing up i never saw that i never saw it in church but it wasn't super foreign because all of the pictures of virgin mary the prophet uh the prophets and the disciples like at christmas time they all have gowns and head coverings i was familiar with nuns and so it's like once i started researching this and i was like yo nuns wear this every day and not one person ever is like take that off like that's too much don't do that like that it's like oh she's a pious woman leave her alone and it's like i was like oh wow okay so then i was like why did the virgin mary like why wasn't she depicted in a crop top and modern clothes or like skinny jeans why do we still depict her like that i'm like because that's like what they wore why she was a virtuous Okay, so let's say the main topics of interest for me were, first of all, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, because I didn't know anything about him, uh, the women's dress code, the dynamic between male and female, uh, violence, alcohol, uh, praying, fasting, and the dynamic between man and woman, if I didn't say that already. Okay, so here's what I found, and here's what I figured out. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a real guy. There's tons of proof and evidence of him, and he never said anything that contradicts with Jesus, peace be upon him, or any of the other guys. He literally had the same message. He was peaceful, he was kind, he was nice, he was a good man, he held his temper, he held his tongue, he treated people well, he made them feel special and important, and he overall, beautiful character, beautiful morals. Now, people want to pick apart him and I see these like things people say on my comments all the time and it's like, calm down. Like this was like 2000 years ago, bro. Like there was different times, like in America, like in America, like a hundred years ago, we had slavery. Women couldn't drive. They couldn't vote. Like they didn't have jobs. Like, I don't know why people think it's like so far off to be like, okay, what did pe what was normal 2000 years ago? And then people come and they're like, oh my God, freaking out. And it's just like, I just don't understand like the inability to actually think on a historical logical like linear timeline where it's like you can see we evolve as a culture a group of people we migrated throughout the world like things change you know and now we're like in this day and age where it's like we are so focused on progression and evolution and change and equality and xyz that's like we have lost all of our tradition and it's my belief that the more we have evolved as a society and the more we have grown and the more progressive and the more more like changes we have made the farther we have gotten from the actual meaning of life from God what it means to be alive it's like for example think of marriage it's like they charge you to do this now like you have to pay a tax on it or you have to apply and this and get approved and it's like really what does it mean to be married it means you take someone you guys are making a commitment to be one first of all for God and to each other and like uniting families and stuff and I think it's sad that everybody's just worried about money and gifts and status and this and race and background and jobs and it's just like they've made it so hard for us to be alive wallahi like alhamdulillah alhamdulillah but anyways so like it's easy 
for me to see that all of the modern ways of thinking very much pollutes our ability to process information and critically evaluate and think because most people aren't thinking on like a huge historical timeline thinking about how things must have started to how we got to where we are now so i feel like that's where a lot of the problems come from so like when i started researching modesty of dress and outfits for women i started realizing that like wow yeah they really do want us to be naked they really want us to be hypersexualized because that's what men like and that's what my society tells me they they only like me if i'm young and i'm beautiful and i'm cool and i'm fun and i'm awesome and i'm you know based on how i look i get respect and then once you start aging or once you you know get divorced or once you do xyz then you're like damaged and you're not good and it's just like it was these things that i really had to kind of like think about the construct of society what we're doing and perpetuating and that's how islam has really helped me because i feel more connected with like the meaning of life and it really made me look at it and be like what like why are you guys doing this like why would i think that a scarf's bad and then it's like i started rewriting what i thought it meant and instead of being scary and foreign it became something that great people before me that religiously were perfect and amazing they wore it they did it and it made me think like okay if they were amazing and like the virgin mary for example was so great and she wore it and nuns are so great and they wear it then like why not like you never see somebody harass a nun and say take that off it's unnecessary this and that like we give them respect we give these depictions and these drawings respect but then we don't give muslim women respect it's rude and like i feel like so much of the west is worried about oppression and they're worried about like Oh my gosh, the Muslim women are oppressed, but they're oppressing them too. And it's like, I really feel like I identify with this as a revert because it's like, as a revert, I don't fit into society. And it's like my friends and my family, my social circles bully me. But then it's like, also I'm a Muslim and the Muslims bully me because it's like, oh, I'm too Muslim for them. And now I'm not Muslim enough for them. And then the Christians come in and then they attack me and then the atheists. And it's just like levels of like, why do you have to speak on what isn't for you? That's what I don't get. So I basically started seeing that society is like commenting on all these things and like why are non-Muslim non-Muslim Western people commenting on the state of Islam? Why are like they so obsessed with it? Like, you know, ruining it and smearing it and all of this stuff. It's just like really weird to me. So I was like, okay, first of all, that's weird. Uh, so then I looked into like eating pork and I was like, I'm not supposed to be eating pork. Then I looked into, which subhanAllah, I never even really liked it because it's nasty and it's super salty. Um, but then I looked into alcohol and I was like, the Bible has like, I think it's like 28 instances where it says that there's benefit in alcohol, but being drunk and being like, um, mischievous and like, what is the word I'm looking for? Being like debauchery, like having debauchery is like sinful to behave like that. So like, while there's benefit, it's not advised to get drunk and do these kinds of things. And then it's like when I looked at Islam and I was like, wow, okay, so like they don't do that. And when you take it a step farther and you learn how the Quran was revealed over over more than 20 years, it didn't from day one say, you are not allowed to drink. You are not allowed to do these things. It was never limiting like that, subhanAllah. Allah like literally revealed things in stages because like he knew if he was like to tell Muhammad to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bring a revelation and it's like we are not allowed to drink everybody would be like deuces i don't want to be of this because you know so it's like progressively happened like don't come to your prayer while you're intoxicated don't xyz and it grew to the point where it's like now we don't drink and it's like i wish people would rem remember this about reaver it's like we're learning we're trying and like the sahaba and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like and may Allah be pleased with them they made excuses for reverts they brought them in they were like okay we got to give them time like don't scare them off let them learn let them do their thing and you know and I always think about that like had Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam been hard and harsh in speech and character he would have repelled people from this beautiful religion and you know subhanallah so it's like really keep that in mind in your interactions with others but um yeah, so the alcohol thing, I got it. The The next thing was like the dynamic between men and women because there's this idea where like men dominate and oppress women in Islam. And it's like once I looked it up and I started looking at the stories and I looked at Ibrahim and Sarah, may Allah be pleased with him, um, or I looked at like any of the religious people in the Bible or in the Quran, I was like, 
it's all about respect and love. Like, it's hard for me to fathom that it's about control and domination and like not equality between the sexes. And as I started learning, learning the story of Ibrahim and Sarah, peace be upon him, before Islam, that they came way before Islam, I was like reading all of these Christian articles about like man and woman are different. They both have strengths and weaknesses, but it's essential to have the man be the head of the house because he's rational, he's logical. He is not making decisions for himself by himself. Like a dictator, he's more of like the the father, the dad, the the carekeeper, the shepherd, the person who's like, okay, I'm watching everybody. Okay, what, it's like deciding what does everybody want for dinner. It's not like what dad wants is what we eat. It's like dad's like, what do you guys want? What should we have? Like, how much money do we have? And it's like he's coming to provide a meal, so to say, for the whole family to enjoy. That's good for them and benefits them. And so it's like I see their relationship being like that. Like the man has like a huge obligation and responsibility to keep everybody's happiness in mind to make sure everything benefits everybody, to make sure they're doing the right things. And once I read these Christian articles, I was like, oh, wow. So anyways, what else did I say? Prayer. Prayer was another one because it looked so foreign to see people praying like that, especially because when you go to church, they're singing and they're like praising and, you know, it's so different to see somebody prostrating. And then it's like once I looked it up and learned that, in the Bible, it says Jesus fell down onto his face and prostrated to God. I was like, they're praying how Jesus probably prayed. And everybody's all pissed about it. And I'm like, I can't understand that. <laughs> like, I can't understand it. And once I actually educated myself and learned that the motion, you're putting the most proud part of your body on the ground in submission, saying like, I submit to you, and that we're taking the time out of our day to do this. I was I was like, wow, that's actually really beautiful. And if I want to pray like Jesus, then I should probably do these things. So I feel like these are some of the things at a glance that I was like, wait, wait, I got to check these things. And once I did my research, I was really pleasantly surprised to um, see that Islam wasn't this scary, crazy thing that people are making it out to be. I was really shocked to realize I wasn't even practicing Christianity. I probably wasn't even doing it right. And I was the most shocked to realize that there was a prophet, peace be upon him, after Jesus. Peace be upon him too. And um, because of my love for Jesus and for God and looking all of this stuff up, that is why I embraced Islam. Because I thought, I don't want to be a person who, out of my own selfishness, decides who was real. Because I thought about how, no offense to the Jews, to each their own, to have the nerve to say Jesus wasn't real was really upsetting to me. And then I thought, what if I would have done this at any point in time? Like, Noah, no, he's not real. Like, you're not a prophet. You don't have any information from God. I would have literally been swallowed in the water. Had I been one of the people of Lut? I would have been crushed by stones. Had I, had I been like one of the disbelieving people of the time, that's what happens. And it's like, I just couldn't help but think that the Quran is beautiful. The principles are the same as Christianity. You can go tit for tat all day, but I don't believe that every single nuance matters. What I mean by that is like, you can find things you like and don't like in anything, or don't agree with or don't understand but I don't care it's like the overall message that overall message is beautiful amazing and I was terrified at the thought of what if this information has come to me from God as a gift and I'm like nope I know better like who am I who am I who am I after all faith is called faith for a reason you never saw any one of the prophets ever peace be upon them all including Adam and Eve you have no actual, like, concrete experience with them. So why is it different from Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Why is Christianity put on such a pedestal and Islam is villainized? And once I started seeing this, it came down to justice and what's right for me. And as a Westerner, realizing how mistreated these people are and how mistreated Islam is, I like had to literally take a stand and be like, yo, why is society telling me to do this? Why are you telling me to, why is my own family members telling me I look better with more makeup and less clothes? 
what is everybody thinking? And I thank God, alhamdulillah, that I was able to wake up and see this and to find the Quran. And it's so beautiful, amazing, subhanAllah. I love reading it and learning. And you know, like Islam has done nothing but clarify Christianity for me to resolve my concerns, my questions. It's so clear. I know how to act and respond in all situations and circumstances. And that really threatens a lot of people, I'm realizing, and it really upsets a lot of people, but, you know, I'm not threatened by that because I'm like, everybody has their own thing. Guidance isn't for everyone. Not everybody needs to think what I think. The last thing I feel like I need to do is go argue with people about what they believe in. People who are searching for information and want it, I'm talking about it. It's here. There, the, the internet is free. You can use it to fight with people that disagree with your beliefs, or you can use it to learn more about your beliefs. And wallahi, if you learn more about your beliefs, you are going to become closer to God. It is my personal opinion, if each of our religions of the book were practicing the books the way that the prophets practiced them and revealed them, we would all look so similar because never can I imagine that God would send one prophet that was this way and one that was another. It's the same story over and over. Somebody with exceptional behavior, character, morals, actions, and words has been sent because they are so, they've got such faith and they're so amazing. You never hear like, this man was really trash and he was picked to come hurt people the most. And I, I like how people see that in any of these stories is like beyond me, beyond me. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So anyways, if you are a Christian or you are non-Muslim and you're looking into these things, I really commend you for not being um, close-minded. Stay open-minded, keep learning information. I firmly believe education, learning, growing, thinking are our keys to personal empowerment and success. We have to start waking up from the things that they're programming us to do and just blindly doing all of this stuff and it's like, I was shook when I was like, dude, you're not supposed to eat bacon. And I was like, the Bible actually says don't even touch it. And you know Christians are, that's the Old Testament. And I'm like, bro, it's in the Bible. Like, you know what I mean? I guess it's like how alcohol was like banned in stages, but it wasn't like completely banned. And then like, no, it's okay to drink now. Why would God take such a filthy animal that is full of so many things like worms and and like things and then turn around and be like no it's okay you can eat it now it literally in the bible says do not touch them they are unclean for you do not eat them they are unclean for you and it is just so wild to me if if this is all you get out of this video that christians hardcore christians who come and troll me and are mean to me and say bad things and hate islam or whatever they eat bacon and if you go look at American TV, bacon, bacon, bacon. They have like bacon on donuts. They have bacon in drinks. They have bacon on everything. Bacon ice cream. And I'm just like, these are the people telling you Islam is bad. Never forget. Never forget. Never forget. I don't trust them anymore. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, it's almost time for Maghrib. And I, it was a pleasure uh, ranting to you today and thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and drop me um, some video suggestions because I need to get more regular with it. Inshallah. I love you and God bless. <laughs>